Oh my god, they actually did it. We're gonna go backwards for once because firstly my mood got changed right again at the end because Gareth, what are you doing, man? Why are you putting Gallagher and Concer on? Could you imagine if the Dutch equalised? We'd be out. What? Like, just leave it. There was one minute left. Just leave it. We were already through and if they equalise, well then good thing we've got all our attackers still on the pitch. Why make those changes? with a minute to go and then give the Netherlands the impetus to potentially get an equaliser. Minor quibble that kind of killed my mood for that one minute before the referee blew his full-time whistle. Then we go to Watkins. Good old Wally Watkins. Hi-ho, Wally Watkins. What an absolute gem of a footballer. What a finish. He's been doing it all season for Aston Villa. The only disappointment, once again, is why didn't Gareth Southgate make that substitution earlier? We've said it all tournament. Harry Kane is absolutely knackered. And I can show you. I'll get the messages up. I've got it right here. You should be able to see it. Right there. 2049. Can you see it? Probably not. If it focuses in. But it says right there. Kane, there we go. 2049. Watkins for Kane as soon as possible. Said that at half time. I could see it at half time. It's the only thing that was missing from that first half performance. Put Ollie Watkins on for Kane. We needed to stretch that defence. What an introduction it was. He caused problems immediately. From the second he got on the pitch, I counted four occasions within the first two minutes of Watkins coming on the pitch where he made a run in behind Van Dyke. It took, I think it was the fifth or sixth occasion for John Stone to hit that long ball down to him. And if Bellingham was a little bit more alert, he would have got on that second ball and we could have had a chance there and then. But the goal itself, absolutely brilliant. Cole Palmer, the other substitute. Best believe I was fuming when he took Phil Foden off. I could not believe he took Foden off when Bellingham did absolutely nothing all game and got booked. But he put Palmer on. Palmer picked the ball up. Brilliant run from Watkins, brilliant ball from Cole Palmer, Watkins in behind, De Vrij on his back, doesn't care, it's Ollie Watkins, he's a lethal finisher and a lethal finish it was, no chance for Verbruggen, through the legs of De Vrij, back of the net, 90th minute, game over, England win 2-1, fantastic result for the country, for the team and they deserved it tonight because they were the better team on the night. Now continuing to go backwards, everything from half-time up until the substitutions of putting Watkins and Palmer on. Why the hell did you tell them to stop playing like they were playing in the first half? Why did we start going defensive again? I was so excited when I saw Luke Shaw coming on at half-time because I was like, brilliant. We've been so dominant in the first half. Walker's getting forward. Trippier's getting forward. The only issue is when Trippier gets it, he has to come back. Now Luke Shaw's coming on, he can go out there and he'll start putting balls in the middle. They never went forward. <laughs> like, they put the extra player on Mainu in midfield and there was so much space out wide and Walker and Shaw weren't getting forward. So that's got to come from the manager. I don't know what he said to them at half time. Yes, like I just said, the Dutch made tactical changes. But, man alive, like utilise the space that's been created because of how effective we were in the middle in the first half. Get it out to Walker, get it out to Saka, get it out to Shaw, whoever I didn't say. Wasted opportunity, I think, in that second half to really press home our advantage, which we had in the first half. And then speaking of said first half, what an unbelievable pair of performances from Phil Foden and Kobe Mainu. Considering how young the two of them still are, especially, of course, Kobe Mainu and selfishly as a Man United fan, absolutely outstanding from the pair of them. The way they moved about the pitch, the urgency, the quickness of the passing, into feet, turn, forwards, into Foden, turn, out wide to Saka, in towards Kane, through on goal, having shots. He was so unlucky with that one where Mainu slipped it into Foden. He tried to sort of like scoop croquetta nutmeg for Bruggen. It just came off of Bruggen's underleg, which meant that Dumfries kept it off the line. He hit the post. He had another couple of chances. He was outrageously good, Phil Foden, in that first half. And obviously the Dutch had to deal with it. And like we've already spoken about in the second half, they dealt with it and we just didn't exploit the extra space that we then got from the extra space that had been taken, or the lack of space then, that Foden and that Mainu had, because they were just so, so good in that first half. And it really gives me optimism as to what we can potentially achieve in the final, because we know Spain's biggest assets are Fabian, Rodri and Dani Olmo. 
If we can do what we did in this game, Rice, Mainu, Foden, Bellingham, get them in tight. Honestly, no, excuse me, I am on the verge of saying drop Jude Bellingham for the final and play Cole Palmer from the start because as effective as Bellingham was at just occasionally holding the ball up, again, too many touches. When Mainu and Foden were playing these passes around, Bellingham was slowing the play down. He was getting on it and then just stuttering and coming back and then the opportunity to play it back to Foden or out to Trippier or through, it just, it was never on because Bellingham was taking too many touches. Foden wasn't doing that. When Palmer came on, Palmer wasn't doing that. And I think there's a big question to be asked about Jude Bellingham. Like I say, he's got his assets. He's big, he's physical, he draws in fouls. But again, I was a little bit concerned about his performance tonight. And then, well, Harry Kane, I've already spoken about it. It's just not fit. Uh, this is not a complaint at Harry Kane. I'm not going to have a go at his performances because one of the main reasons he's coming off every single game is because he's not fit. Harry Kane plays 90 minutes for Bayern Munich every week. He's always played 90 minutes for England. He always played 90 minutes for Spurs. If he's coming off at any stage of the game, that means he's not fit and most likely should not be starting. And it was so frustrating watching him come in and just... Essentially, leave us with no one up front. Like I keep saying, Saka, Foden, Mainu getting on the ball, sharp, quick passing, knocking it around, got to the final third, and there was no one there. There was no one to give it to, no one to get on the end of this brilliant build-up play. So we just had to keep recycling it, going round and round and round and round and round, and eventually it was either a long shot from Foden or a long shot from Mainu or a long shot from Kane if he just got the one who got on the ball and shot from range. We never really had any proper goal-scoring opportunities inside the box other than the Foden one that got cleared off the line and the one right towards the end where, well, two of them, Watkins had two of them, but that's because he's a striker that was actually looking to get in behind and get on the ball. First one where Shaw cut it back and Watkins narrowly missed it and then obviously the goal that he got by making another run in behind. I would genuinely be considering Ollie Watkins to start against Spain, like we just spoke about. They're not going to like it. They're not going to like someone that's going to stretch that defence. They want to play it safe. They want to be calm. They want to be relaxed. If they're already worrying about Foden and Mainu and potentially Bellingham or Palmer and Saka and all these other players in and around our midfield, if they're already worrying about them and then we give them Watkins running in behind them, it stretches that pitch, which then gives even more space to those creative midfielders. Goal's a prime example of that. Watkins stretches the defence, so Van Dijk and De Vrij have to drop back, which means Palmer has the space in the middle to get on the ball and then slip that ball into Watkins, which he puts in the net. Like I say, this is not me having a go at Harry Kane. This is me having another go at Gareth Southgate for not recognising that Kane is hurting this team right now due to his lack of fitness when we've got quality, quality players available that suit the system we're playing. The system is working. This... 4-2-3-1 when we're attacking, 5-4-1, whatever you want to call it, when we're defending. This system is working. We played better against Switzerland. We played even better today against the Dutch. You employ that system again against the Spanish, it should work. Walker gave Gakpo nothing. In theory, he should give Nico Williams nothing. Trippier and Shaw gave Dumfries, Marlon and whoever went out there nothing. Uh, they will do a good job on Lamine Lamal. My one worry as experienced by Xavi Simmons as we make our way all the way back to there, is that we still don't really track that one in the middle. Simmons got a few too many touches for my liking in the first half. And my other complaint would be Declan Rice in that game. I didn't think Declan Rice had a very good game. On multiple occasions, he gave the ball away, most notably, of course, for the goal, where not only did he give the ball away, but then he was out-muscled by little Xavi Simmons, who should never really be outstrengthening Declan Rice. And he smacks the shot in the top corner. I am of the opinion that Jordan Pickford should do better. But that's only because I'm the, of the opinion that Jordan Pickford is too short. I think Pickford had another good game. I think he's a very good leader. He's a good motivator. He's good on the ball. Some of his kicks downfield were brilliant. Made a good save from the Van Dyke walker own goal incident. But ultimately, as I always say with Jordan Pickford, pick as many examples as you want. The two notable ones for me are in the last two Euro semi-finals: The Damsgaard free kick and the Simons goal today. A taller goalkeeper saves both of those goals. So it's the pros and the cons. Obviously, wonder strikes can happen. We saw it last night as well with the Yamin Yamal goal against the French. 
Wonder goals can just happen. It's a phenomenal strike from Simmons, but I think Pickford should have done better. Now, finally, we must talk about the moment of ultimate controversy, which is, of course, England's penalty, which got them level. I, well, again, I could show you the text message because I sent my text message before they even mentioned a VAR review. My initial instinct, the moment I saw the incident happen, was penalty. And the reasoning I have for that is because Dumfries challenges for his block with his stud up. If you're going to make a block, I'm a defender. If I'm making a block in that situation, I'm going like that. Because you want to make the block with your leg. If you're going studs up, that means you think you can actually win the ball. Dumfries does not win the ball. Harry Kane wins the ball. And Dumfries, with his studs up, goes into Harry Kane's boot. That is not an attempt to block the ball. It is a foul. If that's in any other part of the pitch, that's a foul. I know people are saying, well, Harry Kane still got his shot away. But this is my whole point. Harry Kane's got his shot away, but Denzel Dumfries isn't trying to block the shot. He is trying to win the ball. And he's not won the ball, and he's caught Harry Kane. It's a penalty. And I would be saying that if it was at either end of the pitch. So I know people are going to be watching this going, oh, you're only saying that because you're a biased England fan. No. Watch any of my Man United reactions. I always give my honest thoughts on penalty decisions and how I read them. If a player has got their studs up in a dangerous area and makes contact with an opponent, that is a foul. It is dangerous play and arguably it's lucky it's not a red card. I wouldn't say it is a red card because it's foot on foot contact. But his studs are up, it's dangerous and he catches his man. Whether that ball goes into row Z, the back of the net, whatever. Dumfries should still be booked for that challenge. If Harry Kane scores that goal, Dumfries should still be booked for that challenge because it's dangerous play. And by default, dangerous play is a foul, and a foul in the area is a penalty. End of discussion. It's a penalty. And what a penalty from Harry Kane, by the way, as well. Like I say, I'm not going to have a go at Harry Kane today. He did the best that he could with the available fitness that he's got. But he was done at halftime, and Watkins needed to come on. And in the 15 minutes he was on, he won us the game. So, well done, Gareth Southgate, for allowing the players to play in that first half. Bad Gareth Southgate for telling those players to stop playing in the second half and restricting our fullbacks in the second half. Well done, Gareth Southgate, for actually making a positive change and taking Kane off and putting Watkins on. Bad Gareth Southgate for taking Phil Foden off when he was our best player. But at least the person who replaced him then set up the goal. And then, obviously, well done, Ollie Watkins, for getting the goal that won us the game. And then final boo, Gareth Southgate, for putting Concer and Gallagher on and doing everything in his power to throw that game in the last seconds of it. Oh, there we go. Joyous, but equally chaotic rant and jubilation celebration over. Bring on Sunday. Bring on Spain. Can we beat them? Absolutely 100% we can beat them. Come on, England. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'll see you very soon.